Beloved, I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ and Pastor Felu Mosheson, the host of Living by Grace. It is with great joy in my heart that I come to you again today. I thank God for what the Lord is doing in your life through this platform. And today, another great day, the Lord is going to do even mightier things for you and through you in Jesus' name. I believe one of the greatest gifts that the Lord has given us as Christians, children of God, is the gift of grace. Because with the grace of God, we are able to live the life that God has given us. Child of God, the life that we have in Christ is a good life, enviable life, blessed life, adorable. It's an empowered and a gracious life. But we need the grace of God to be able to experience that life. And that's what this transmission is all about, to connect you to the knowledge of the grace. To connect you to practical understanding of how to live by grace. And today, you will be encouraged. You will be connected. And you'll be empowered to live better going forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let your best come forth. Let your best version be visible. Make room for God to be in your life. And how does God do that? He attracts to you situations. He brings into your life people. He orders you to places. This situation, these people, these places, they place a demand on you. You either arise and shine or you arise and run away. Don't run. Because every opportunity that you arise and run is an opportunity that you have lost to experience the power and the greatness of God. You've been praying for greatness. How do you think the greatness will come? It is by seizing these opportunities to obey God that as you obey God in them, you see the move of God in your life. You don't have much. But somebody came to you and asked of you to help. I know you are saving to do something great. But somebody has come and you could see that he has need. And total amount that he needed is within the little that you have. See, give to the person. That is you. Putting the word of God ahead of yourself. That is you loving your neighbor as you love yourself. The little you have cannot meet your need. But it can meet the need of that person. Help him. Help her. It is better to make a person laugh with the little you have. Than to have that little and not, make your, not able to meet your need and not able to meet anybody's need. So, it is better for your provision to be working than for your provision to be sitting idle doing nothing. All in the name of, I'm gathering it to be enough. It may never be enough. And you may never live to see the day to be enough. Child of God, Abraham, when his opportunity came, he arose and he shone. I can tell you several other people in the Bible. What about Moses? Moses, for the sake of the word of God, he gave up life as a prince of Egypt to become a fugitive, all because it is what God asked of him. He could have turned his back. I want to enjoy the pleasure of Egypt. But Moses knew the word of God. And when the opportunity came, Moses did not disappoint. Child of God, listen to me. This is your set time to be great. And greatness comes by the opportunities to be a blessing to somebody. 
with whatever you have, wherever you are. See, there are steps to greatness, stepping stones. What the Lord is telling you through me is that the problems that you see around you, the needs of people, of places, that God allows into your life, they are your stepping stone to greatness. Don't run away. Don't turn the other way. Don't turn the blind side. Every need that God allows into your life is part of the stepping stone to your greatness. You've been praying for greatness, right? The answer to your prayer has come. It is in those needs. Look at the people of Israel in the wilderness. When their light trigger came, even though they were in the wilderness, the Bible said God asked them to give in their wilderness for the building of a tabernacle for him among them. Because it is what God has said. And they are very little. But because God has asked them to give, the Bible said they took and they gave to God. They took and they gave to God. So when their light trigger came, they did not disappoint. When their opportunity to shine came, they allow the light in them to shine. They allow God to do the will of God. You know, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. Meaning, it takes God on earth to do the will of God on earth. And God is already on earth in you. So, every opportunity that comes, for God in you is an opportunity for God in you to do his will in that situation. And all that God is asking you is allow me. And allowing God is going to be costly to your flesh. He says so. He says so. Allowing God is going to be costly to your flesh. And that's why he said, anybody that will follow me must carry his cross, deny himself. Allow God, brethren. Allow God, sisters. Allow God, Father and Mother. It's not you. It is God that is the light in you. He wants to shine. Allow Him. Another example that I will give to you of people whose opportunity came and they allowed the light to shine is Peter, Paul, Matthew, John, all these disciples. They gave up their life as fishermen to follow Jesus. When the opportunity came to render service in the name of the Lord, Paul gave up his practice as a lawyer. Matthew gave up his job as a tax collector. Peter gave up his job as a fisherman to be able to render service in the name of the Lord. Listen to me, child of God. Let your best comfort in this situation you are going through. It is not of what is happening to you, but of what it reveals in you. Listen to me, child of God. What happens to you is not as important as what it makes to happen in you. What happens to you is not as important as what it makes to happen in you. Let everything make God to happen in your life. Let everything make the word of God to be obeyed by you. That is what you should do in every situation. Obey the word of God. Because every time that you obey God, you are allowing God. To obey God is to allow God. And to allow God is to arise and shine. But to disobey God for whatever reason is to arise and flee. Like Jonah did in Jonah chapter 1. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, let's close it by learning a few lessons. Lesson number one. 
the needs that God allows around you in people, in places, and in the things around you are your opportunities. They are your God-given opportunities to arise and shine with your light. The needs that God allows around you, in the people around you, in the place you find yourself, in the things in your life. Take note. These needs, they are your triggers. They are your God-given opportunity for you to arise and shine with your light. Don't forget. So don't disdain these needs. Don't disdain these places. There is a reason why God has allowed this need around you. It is for you to shine your light in it. You have the light for that need. That's why God allowed it. And that's why your needs are different from my needs. According to the light you have, so the needs that God allowed to you. According to the light I have, so the needs that God allowed to me. Number one lesson. Every need in your life is allowed by God. Whether need in people, or need in the place you are, or need in the things around you. God has allowed those needs because the light that can meet them is in you. That's the first lesson. The Levite failed God. He didn't allow the light to shine. The priest too failed God, but the Samaritan did not. You will not fail God in Jesus' name. Number two, the second lesson we learn from that story in Luke chapter 10 is that every bearer of light, that's a Christian, you have a choice to make. Whether to arise and shine with your light or to arise and run away with your light. Every Christian has a choice to make in every situation. You have a choice. Number one, you could arise and let your light shine or you could arise and run away with your light. Jonah did. You, saw the, you know the consequences of it. And the people that did not run away, you saw the consequences of it too. For example, in Isaiah chapter 16, you see the consequences. He said, if you arise and you shine, from verse 3 to the end of that chapter, it talks about the consequences. The blessing, the honor, the prosperity, the faith. So you have a choice. And consciously or unconsciously, all these years, you have been making choices. You've either been arising and shining or arising and running away. And your life today, as per the manifestation of God's blessing, is the reflection of the choices you have made. So second lesson, you have a choice as a child of God. You carry light. So what you will do with your light in your situation is your choice. You rise and shine with it or you arise and run away with it. But please note, whichever choice you made, there is going to be a consequence. But let me advise you, like Joshua said, as for me and my house, we have decided to serve the Lord. My advice to you is see, arise and shine. That situation is your opportunity to allow God to have his way in your life. Let God use you to bless your neighbor. Let God use you to bless your location. Let God use you to bless your neighborhood. And the third lesson we can learn from the story is to arise and shine is to meet the need of the people around us. The place we are in and the things in our life. That's what it means to arise and shine. To arise and shine is to allow the grace of God that we carry, no matter how small, to be a blessing to the person around us. In John chapter 6, we read the story of a multitude gathering to Jesus. And Jesus looking for where or asking for where they can get bread to feed all of them. 
Philip said they can't get bread. Thomas said they have only a little boy's bread. And, that, and in that congregation, a little boy arose. All the boy had were five loaves and two fishes. But that was what he had. He did not allow the devil to convince him that because it is small, it is useless. Even though the disciple said so. He said he would rather give it, whatever it can do in the hand of the Lord, than hold it and it will do nothing for him. Child of God, let your best come true. Your best may be the least in the sight of men. But it is still your best. And it is possible in the hand of God to use it to produce a miracle. In John chapter 14 verse 12, where Jesus said, I will do great works to you. How do you think he's going to do a child of God? He said, the works that I do, you will do an even greater works. How can God use you to do greater works? That is what I'm telling you now. It is by allowing your best to come true. Don't be stingy. Don't be self-centered. Don't believe the devil that everybody is taking care of himself and God take care of us. No. If the Lord opens your eyes to see a need in your church, the Lord opens your eyes to see a need in your staff, the Lord opens your eyes to see a need in your neighborhood, Stop. If it is a piece of paper that is wrongly positioned, stop, pick it up and throw it into the dustbin. If it is a person that is unruly and you can talk to the person, stop, make out the time and put a word across to the person. Every time, everywhere, always let your best to come true. For that is what it means to live the life of arising and shining 24-7. So to lesson number three, to arise and shine is to let the word of God be fulfilled in every situation you find yourself. And finally, what does it mean to arise and shine? Lesson number four, to arise and run away is to allow your carnal self to respond to the needs that you see around you. And you know how your carnal self will respond? It will think of yourself first. You will hold. You will be told. You will say no. You will say you are in a hurry. You will say it doesn't concern me. You will say let the government fix it. No. Anytime you ignore the needs around you, then your carnal self is having his way. But what if I don't have? There is no child of God that does not have something to give to any situation that arises. Money is not everything. You can see a need and you don't have the money for it, but you can pray to God for it. In Acts chapter 3, what did Peter say? He said, silver and gold, like others are given to you, I do not have to give to you. But what I have, I will give. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the guy rose up and walked. Don't despise the power of your prayers. Don't despise the power of your faith in God. For what the money that men give to a need cannot do, your prayer, God can use it to do it. So, child of God, there is power in prayers. At least you can talk to God about it. And so go ahead and talk to God. Listen, brethren. Before I see you next Wednesday by the grace of God, please note that there is a higher you and that is the Spirit of God in you. He lives in you. And the reason why he lives in you is because he wants to live through you. Believe me, child of God, many of these challenges that you see in your life today Financial challenges, family asking, and virus. See, they are attracted to you by the Spirit of God. Because your challenges are his opportunities to live. 
Darkness is the number one opportunity for light to shine. If you put on the light under the sun, nobody will appreciate it. So all these challenges that you are seeing today in your life and in the life of people around you, most of them are allowed into your life by the Holy Spirit in you. Because they are His opportunity to glorify, to be glorified in your life. So that you don't have the physical resources to meet those needs does not mean you cannot meet those needs. In fact, he's the one that arranged it that by the time the need came, you don't have the physical resources to meet it. In the hope that you will turn to him and then he will step out and meet them. Don't give up on your marriage because your spouse is problematic. Don't give up on that your child. Don't give up on your business. Don't give up on your ministry. Don't give up on your brethren and don't give up on your dream. That you don't have the physical resources today is because you have the Holy Spirit. You can turn to the Lord in prayers. The Samaritan, the little he had, he had ministered it to that man. And he promised that he was going to come back. But the Bible never said anything about that story again at that point because God took over. I close with this word. The thing that happens to you is not as important as the things that it makes to happen in you. Let this situation make God to happen in your life. And glory will be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to thank God that you have listened to me. By the grace of God, you will never remain the same again in Jesus' name. Live like this, and I'm assuring you, I don't know when, but before you die, nations will hear about you. What will they hear about you? They will hear about the exploit of God's grace in your life. If you live as I've described, always making your best to come true, to come forth. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Now, if you are not yet a Christian, then you need to give your life to Jesus. Like I said earlier, you need to believe that he is God. You need to believe that he came to save you. And you need to believe that he died to save you. And then confess your sins. Ask him to forgive you and receive him into your life as your Lord and Savior. If you do that, you are born again. I would like to pray with you. I will hereby commend you unto God that as you have heard and understood, Receive grace to be able to so live. In Jesus' name, I pray for you. Again, look at the screen. You will see our handles. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and what are numbers. Those numbers are WhatsApp numbers. You can reach us. And we can join you to pray and counsel you. Until I see you again next Wednesday, keep living under the atmosphere of grace. In Jesus' name.